Hello everyone, this is Jotto and welcome back to the Rogue section of the Grand Tournament with a Dear Line Man. So, not to be confused with the Line Man. But anyway, so Rogue has some I uh, strange cards. I don't really know how to There's going to be a lot of confusion in terms of classification here cuz there's some there's some strange cards uh Anyway, so, starting with the Buccaneer. Buccaneer, as the name implies, is a pirate. He is a 1 mana 2 1 pirate, with whenever you equip a weapon, give it plus 1 attack, which means you get your hero powers a 2 2 and things like that. Um, I don't think this is good enough. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't like it very much either. Uh, it's just, uh, I think it's fine in Arena. It's like a whirling zap, and not whirling zap matic. It's like a uh, what's the rogue three two mech? The uh, hairdresser bot. The goblin, the goblin auto barber. There you go, the hairdresser bot. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit like that in the way it functions, where it gives your dagger plus one attack usually. Right. Uh, the difference is that you can't use it as much as a surprise with an existing weapon, but you can use it for cheaper with a new weapon. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, the thing is, is that when you play this card, you also like when you play it on turn one, you need this. You need this to live, which is not unlikely when you play it on turn one. But then uh, you get you have to dagger up next turn, right? You're almost pigeonholing yourself into daggering up the following turn. Yeah, you kind of are. The other problem with it is that auto barber was always something where if you needed to, you had nothing else, you could always just coin dagger into auto barber if you had no backstabs or anything to deal with early drops. Right. And that would actually deal with all your early drops for you, but now it's in the other way around, so while it looks more mana efficient, sometimes you can play two sets of mana over two turns instead of all at once. Right. To be considered, though, it is a pirate. It is a pirate, which is more relevant as usual. Uh, they... If you're feeling frisky, then this is going to go on your pirate deck, but I don't think many people are going to feel frisky enough. Pirate deck isn't there yet. It's, you know what it reminds me of? It's like Face Priest. Rogue Pirates gets one or two new cards a set. <laughs> anyway. Undercity Valiant. Two mana, three, two. Common. Passes the vanilla test, arena-wise. With combo, deal one damage. Now an arena, two drop, with a bit of relevance later on, sure. Um, in Constructed, you are not an SI7 agent. You're just not. Yeah, I mean, it is a two drop. Uh, rogues don't have a two drop. Just straight up, they don't have a two drop. So this... Uh, would fit into a mid-range rogue, although I don't see why you'd play such a mid-range rogue. Um, mm, not to mention that it's like, yeah, sure, you get your combo later on in the game, but later on in the game, you probably are just using SI sevens for the same role. Yeah, it's and... not quite there yet. It's not quite impactful mm. enough. It's it, it's it's a, a convenient answer, somewhat to aggro a little bit, but uh, the the problem is that. Especially going second, you often skip your second turn as a rogue because of SI7 agent. Again, that's the obvious comparison, but it is true. You do often skip your second turn, basically your two mana turn, by just right. going combo into three drop. Yeah, the best value you're ever going to get out of this card is when your opponent goes turn one leper gnome and you coin out this, right? But that, yeah. that's not enough to make the card worth playing in your deck. I agree. Anyway. Shadow Pan Rider, 5 mana, 3, 7, no creature type, but it is a panda. Mm -hmm. And it has combo, gain 3 attack. Now this is Boulder Fist Ogre stance with combo. In Arena, sure, 6, 7 is always, is always relevant, I like it. In Constructed, however, this just feels like a slower Boulder Fist Ogre. <laughs> well, okay, so the thing is, is... Um... Yeah, this entire set is going to be probably the set that we that, that, that we miss value the cards the most. <laughs> um, Maybe. Mainly because of how, how weird these cards are. Now, the, the thing about this card is that it's actually incredibly strong. Again, if mid-range rogue is, is, is going to be a thing, that's very difficult to tell whether or not mid-range rogue is going to be a thing. If it is, this card is going to be incredibly strong. Um, I, because I, I, have no, I have no doubt that this combo is going to hit even on turn five, more often than not, you can coin this out on turn four. Okay, turn that five. is powerful. That yeah. is powerful. 
that's obviously powerful. But then you have other cards that it, it, I, I don't find it unlikely with, with, with prep plays, etc. Um, you'll find ways uh, to combo this out. It, it just either. feels like if you're, especially with prep, if you're doing like prep, spell, shadow pan, and your opponent's like, why is that not an Edwin? And why is it not? It's like, why isn't it an Edwin Van Cleef? And you're like, oh, oh. actually, I, I don't know. <laughs> you find, I, I, I think that I, I think that you'll find ways. I think that if if, if, if mid range rogue is a thing, um, which I don't find to be too unlikely, then this card is going to be one of the cornerstones of the deck. Maybe I don't know. I'm not a big fan of this. Like going second, yeah, you get to coin it out in turn four, and that's crazy. But the problem is if you're going first, or if you don't have a backstab, or you have to use your backstab early, it will. In about half of the situations, it'll probably be very powerful. The problem is the other half, it'll just be a slow bowl of Histogram. Um, uh, which I mean, is quite. an issue. Uh, not quite. I think that... Uh, not to mention Boulderfist doesn't see play anyway. Well, right. I think that I, uh, even considering the fact that Boulderfist Ogre doesn't see play, that doesn't mean that, 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 it's, uh, that it should be completely underrated, right? Um, I think that the upside of being able, of, of having those those games where you can play on turn four, where you can backstab it out on turn five, may make it worth it being played on turn six with a deadly poison and, and having games like that. Maybe. We'll see. Anyway, on to the cut purse. First rare. Two men, two, two. Whenever this minion attacks a hero, add the coin to your hand. Shouldn't it be a coin because the coin to your hand multiple times is a bit strange? But anyway... Uh, no, because the coin is the name of the card. Yeah, technicalities. Uh, I, I like the way a card reads more than that. But anyway, the point is, I don't think this is good. Yeah, it needs to yeah. hit them? Why does it need to hit them? Why not just make it a battle cry? Yeah. yeah, it's not good. It's not good in either format. Although, it's also a typo on it. The coin should have a capital T in it. It's also... That is true. That's probably also... And it should probably be bold. That's yes. probably why it doesn't read very well, because your brain doesn't shortcut that it's a card name. Right. Anyway, don't like yeah, it. Not... Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Burgle, three mana. Add two random class cards to your hand from your opponent's class. Now, this is the rogue's latest and greatest version of the very, very standard arcane intellect, which it seems like eventually every single class is going to have an arcane intellect of some kind. In fact, Shaman got one this set, basically. Slightly different variation. Rogue got one, now Priest, Warlock, Mage, Druid warrior, doesn't... Warrior, that's good enough. I mean, Warrior, does Warrior have any? That just straight draw two for... No, but the, the, in other words, there's very few classes that are missing this right now, and I foresee in the next year, probably every class will have the three mana mediocre draw spell. Yeah. Uh, like Arcane Intellect is oh, is probably the best out of all of them, ironically. Maybe uh, Thought Steel. <laughs> but I think uh, that both Burgle and Thought Steel are better than Arcane Intellect. Probably, but um, depends on the deck you're playing. But anyway, because sometimes decks cards from your deck is worth more than random cards. But anyway, the point is, Burgle. It, it I'm gonna say it will not see play, not because of the card power level. But because Rogue has Sprint, yeah. and this feels like the most overkill on draw ever, and often Rogue is one of those classes where the cards in your deck are very synergistic, so getting two random class cards will often be worse than yeah, cards um, in your deck. Well, that's the thing, is that this card's not going to be seen in those combo Rogue decks. Right? Or like, Oil or, Rogue, or anything like that. Yeah, Oil Rogue, Miracle Rogue, they're not going to use this card. There's no, there, it, doesn't, it doesn't help anything. Um, like I, I hate to keep plugging mid range rogue, but it feels like that's why this card exists, right? Is to Maybe. make. That, um, I still, I think, no, nah, I still disagree there because rogue is the kind of, is the kind of class which they always find something to do with their mana because they have a lot of cheap spells and they have the hero power which they can keep spamming, so they always find something to do with their mana. So playing burgle on turn three or four or something, or something just feels wrong. Whereas it's often better just to play out your hand and then sprint up later. Yeah, but how, how many times do you re-dagger a 1-1 a, a, a one, one weapon already? Right? That's not like, the point. The point is that Rogue in general likes curving out. They're a bit like Druid in that regard. Well, yes, but it's, and it's, but it's easier to curve out when you have cards in your hand to do it with. Yeah, but the question is... The problem is Burgle has to be played to make it worth it in most situations because Sprint is such a powerful late-game card. 
especially with preparation. Like I remember there were a couple mid-range rogues that were literally running preps just for sprint. <laughs> um, like you need Burgle to have effectiveness in the earlier turns, so that you can warrant playing it over, oh, not over sprint necessarily but as a supplement or instead of a second sprint. Now the problem is, especially with mid-range rogue, they're probably going to have some three drops already, and they're probably going to have some four drops, which means that it's not necessarily the card power level, it's the problem that you're going to have an issue where you're just like, I can't find a turn to play this. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, yeah, and I think that's where the issue lies, is I don't think that it's going to fit into into decks, uh, especially, especially not as a two-off. Especially sure. since Rogue is a very tempo-based class, even mid-rangey Rogues traditionally have a very tempo style to them, and Burgle directly loses you tempo because it's a draw spell that gains you value in card advantage, but not in tempo. Yeah, you would need to prep it, and then it makes your sprints worse. Uh, so that, 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 that's what makes it tough. So you may not even be running sprint, which I don't know if you could justify doing that. I don't know if you could justify replacing sprint with Burgle. Like, sprint is such a powerful draw effect that you're prepared to lose four mana worth of tempo just to play it. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot. And before anyone asks, four mana to discard two cards and draw four is, in fact, better <laughs> than three mana draw two. Uh, yeah because it gives you more card selection since you're discarding a card to play it and you're like it's plus two in the end and it's nice but anyway uh arena wise it's a three mana draw spell i'll take it it's not yeah. fantastic but i'll take it yeah, it gives good. you class cards it doesn't give you minions only but it does give you class cards and the level of uncertainty means it's harder to, for your opponent to play around certain things yeah so class is just stronger in general so that is also true i'll take it anyway on to the shady dealer <laughs> that's a bit that's a good name. Alright. Three mana, four three with battle cry. If you have pirate, game plus one plus one. First of all, vanilla test passes an arena. Yes. It's okay in arena. It's not a three four, but not many things are a three four. Yep. Uh as far as pirates goes, yep, play it. Is it enough to drive a pirate deck? No. No. There aren't enough the problem is it's a bit like dragons with BRM. I think Dragons is different now, but Dragons and BRM had like the Blackwing cards, which were insane. And very few good Dragons to actually play. And Pirates is in the same place, where they've got like Shady Dealer, and then they've got their Anthem effect on um, on what's it called? The Captain? So uh -huh. it's like, yeah, the synergy's there, but all the Pirates suck. <laughs> yeah, there aren't enough good Pirates. There are only a couple. I mean, Captain Greenskin would probably also be used because you're playing a weapon class, but there just guess, aren't like, Pirates. Dread Corsair is the only playable one, but that's because Warrior has four attack weapons. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, like, like you'd see South Sea Captain, you'd see uh, South Sea Deckhand, Captain Greenskin, but it's just, that's still not enough Pirates. Like, it's tough. I don't know. It's, first of all, before we rate this card a bit more. Um, I love the design on this thing, that the thing that works with pirates is a shady dealer. <laughs> that's yeah. really cool. <laughs> that's that's just a cool design. A perfect name there. And he's also a gnome. Makes sense. Uh, but anyway, I like the flavor and things like that, but when it comes to playability, there's two separate types of cards. There's like fun cards, and then there's playable cards. They're not mutually exclusive, but sometimes they are, and this feels like it's part of that. Alright. Beneath the grounds, three mana epic. Shuffle three ambushers into your opponent's deck. When drawn, you summon a 4 4 and ruby, an obligatory rogue mill card. Yep. Um, rogue mill, sure. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it actually, in, in both formats, right? I mean, it's, it's three mana, though. Three mana, uh, not to be overlooked, it's. This is a pretty strong card for three mana. In um, mill. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh. Well. In in a vacuum. In a vacuum. It's just that it doesn't it doesn't fit into into other rogue decks and uh, other rogue constructed decks. The games don't typically last long enough for you to actually get what you want out yeah. of the out of the effect. The other problem with this kind of thing is that you can't play it in any tempo based rogue because unless you're like got a Mars level lock, this is going to be a tempo loss. Right, but uh, it's, it's a very strong mill card. Very strong mill card. It's a very sure. strong mill card, that's true. I mean, Rogue has the most deck manipulation. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't mean card manipulation, I mean literally the deck. <laughs> uh, they do have quite a few cards that do that now. And 
I don't know, go nuts. Uh, bad in arena, bad and constructed, try to mill. Yeah, is this, is this card strong enough to make mill rogue borderline? Probably no. not. But uh, but it's getting, getting a little bit closer. What would be necessary for mill decks you play would more be how slow the metagame is as opposed yeah. to the deck itself. Uh, uh, right. It's well, just yeah. one of those kinds of things. Unless they push it way too far. <laughs> Yeah. Because, uh, yes, fast metagames for mill is generally a bad thing. Alright, so, so far, we're, we're not on a roll as far as rogue cards go. Alright, Poison Blade. Oh, it isn't getting much better. <laughs> four <laughs> mana, one, three. Your hero power gives this weapon plus one attack instead of replacing it. They built in, in Venom, and they built in the old rogue boost for four. Man, oh my god. This card is a disgrace. Awful. This card is such a disgrace. <laughs> it's hilariously bad. Like, yeah. to get the same value as an Assassin's Blade with a little less utility with Deadly Poison, you need to invest. Instead of 5 and a Deadly Poison for 6, you have 5 for the Deadly Poison, plus 3 hero powers. Yeah. And, and mind That's you, 11 mana. Mind you, the durability is only 3. <laughs> right. Oh like, god, yeah, it's like, you spend the entire game, this better do some serious blade flurrying. This is like the most hyped up flame strike in the entire game. Yeah, this part is, this part is a disgrace. Oh this is my hard god. To, for, to be eaten up by a Harrison Jones. It's on curve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> such a for Harrison. Harder. It's such an atrocious weapon. What is it with Rogue getting really bad epic weapons? Yeah. And it's not even good in, uh, it's not, it's not even, it's, it's, it's worse than the mech weapon. I think, Easy. I would say it's worse than the hero power weapon. Uh, yeah, and it's not even good in arena, it's an epic. Now, I get that the epics are generally underwhelming, but not this underwhelming, this card is bad. <laughs> These are the kinds of cards you pick, what was it, this of the neutral epics which you said were like borderline pickable? Yeah. This so, is th this is the kind of card you pick the spell eater, the hero power switcher over. Yeah. This, no, I picked Doomsayer over this. This is a four mana Light Justice with less durability. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you kidding? Oh my god, this is so bad. Oh, can we at get a I good can... epic weapon at some point for Rogue, please? At least I can pick Doomsayer and hope I draft Conceal. Like, this is so bad. <laughs> or at least they, they tank seven. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. Anyway, moving on. Are we going to get a, a single... Good rogue card. So far, we've got Shadow Pan Rider in the very questionable slot. <laughs> Alright, a new Brack. Nope. <laughs> Nine mana. Eight four. Fails the VGH test. R death Rattle. Return this to your hand and summon a four four. So it doesn't fail the VGH test. You want to know the problem with this card? It costs nine mana. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Why? Yeah, it costs nine, right? So it's like it retur returning it to your hand to summon a four four isn't enough to make you want to play it, right? Because like, then you have to spend nine mana to play it again. It's I would ridiculous. rather have a boom on the board than this, and that costs two less. Yeah. Um, you know what this is? This is the ultimate grinder card. Yeah. This is. It's. It's like it's not even good enough to be unless in you're against a priest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This isn't even good enough to be in mill rogue, like. I don't even know why you play this in Milrogue. You just keep losing turns every time. Like, yes, the BGH, and it's like, aha, I have it again. What's going to really suck is when they're just like, silence, kill it. And you're just like, oh, I just no, skipped no, my turn. No, I wouldn't silence it. I'd dare my opponent to play it again. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's going to really suck when your opponent saps it against Rogue, and you're just like, oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, the effect is nice, but it costs way too much mana. Yeah. So... Are we actually like 0 0.5 out of 9 for rogue playables? Yeah, these cards suck. I mean, we could be we could be very far off because like the thing about rogue as a class is that so many different combo uh, <sighs> variants come out of rogue that make cards that were seemingly bad actually much better than yeah, we thought. I, I know, be. but it's like you, you're talking about like several tiers above what we think. Right. <laughs> for some of these cards like uh, in the future, I guess maybe Shady Dealer would be good eventually. Burgle, I wouldn't be shocked. Shadow Pan Rider, I wouldn't be shocked either. But the rest are atrocious. Yeah, the rest, are, the rest, the rest are the rest are rather bad. I, I hope, I really hope that someone finds a way to make Cut Purse good. 
<laughs> I really hope. I don't know how, but if you I make it happen, good on you. Miracle yeah. Rogue 2.0. Uh, oh, Alright, that's about it for the Rogue. Not impressed with Rogue, guys. And it sucks, because Rogue is the only golden class I haven't gotten yet. And I'm 100 wins away, and I just like... This set's not going to help me get those. Well, Oro Rogue is still very good, just not plays out. I, f I always found that kind of funny about Oro Rogue. It's like, tier, it's been tier 1 for months, and yet you're lucky to play against one a day. Yeah. You're just like, it's, it's, where is it all the Rogue? It makes no sense. Bother to play. Like, I guess. Know. Also, a lot of people just don't like Rogue. I think it goes back to the whole Miracle Rogue thing, where a lot of people just hate Rogue. Mm -hmm. Um, so they just don't want to be seen playing Rogue. Rogue isn't, it's not uh, a fun class to play as. It just isn't. Like, Miracle Rogue was the only people. fun Rogue variant ever. <laughs> kind of, although even then it got a bit boring sometimes. When it was really overpowered, it was more like playing Solitaire. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people really like Rogue, and everyone, I mean, the, every class has players which really like the class. Yeah. And don't just play it to win, they actually really like the class. And... Those are the people playing Oro Rogue, because while the deck is very good, most people don't like playing Rogue, which means even if it does win, no one can be bothered to learn it unless you're a pro-level player, basically. Yep. Uh, so yeah, that's basically when no one plays Oro Rogue. <laughs> this is when I'm going to get five comments saying, we play Oro Rogue, and I'm like, eh, okay, yeah, some people play Oro Rogue. Uh, but anyway... Thank you for tuning in for this particular Rogue review. We are on to the Shaman next, so stay tuned for that one. 